It's Zach Hayes here for Complex AU, and we've brought out a gang of aficionados for our top 10 movies about hoops. Presented by the Adidas Top 10, available now at Foot Locker. Kyrie's Pepsi-born alter ego Uncle Drew made his way to the silver screen in 2018, making $46 million along the way. Hollywood's COVID restrictions will probably see a sequel put on ice. So lame, but it's great. <laughs> I, I thought it was like a really cheap production, but I'm pretty sure they spent a lot of money. I think it's just the way it just came out of there, but I loved it. It was so funny. It was like, she was so funny. Nah, don't give him that. You still don't believe, do you? At number nine, Sixth Man is a late 90s comedy starring one of the Waynes brothers, meaning it's a peak late 90s comedy starring one of the Waynes brothers. It was about brothers playing basketball, two brothers, and one passed during basketball game in high school. And so, like, that really resonated with us because me and my brothers were close playing the game that we love, so. And we playing the same teams, too. <laughs> I bet you all wondering what I'm doing, huh? Yeah, and it was like a slash comedy, like comedy film because he like comes back as a ghost and helps his brother win the championship. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's really crazy stuff. I don't know what they were thinking back in that day, but it was a, it was one to remember. Nick superfan Spike Lee takes eighth spot with He Got Game. Denzel Washington, John Turturro, Rosario Dawson, and Ray Allen losing is impossible. Basketball is is, is like poetry in motion. Just coming down the court. You got a defender in your way, you, you take him to the left, you take him back to the right, and he's falling back, and you just, Jay, right in his face. And then you look at him, and then you say, what? It's a really, really good movie. Even if you're not into basketball, it's an incredible movie. Like, Denzel is so good at it. Raylan kills it as well, like, acting-wise, he smashes it. 30 years ago, one of the greatest movies in cinematic history was released to a worldwide box office taking of 90 million. White Man Can't Jump is that movie. Wes and Woody at the start of their ascension to icon status. Oh, so funny. It's about under, underestimating people, you know? This white man came and it's like, it just tells you that basketball is a global game. Don't worry, Sydney, I've hustled a hell of a lot better players than you before. <laughs> Don't put up no brick. Hey, would you stop <laughs> yapping and let brother shoot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. See you some wrist. <laughs> Oh, sweet. And I love the title, White Man Can't Jump, because that's not true. <laughs> Have you seen them in AFL? Yeah. They're taking speckies on people. <laughs> I don't know what you people are talking about. What's it about? It's about a white man that can't jump, but he can jump. You get me? It's a play on words. I remember this one scene so clearly, like he's coming down from the train station, and they're like, pick, pick whoever you want on your team, rah, 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 and they've already like, sussed out that they're gonna do this thing, right? So he comes walking down the thing, and the guy's like, yeah, I picked that white guy over there. And they're like, oh, that guy, yeah, it's why. Yeah, we got you, we're, we're, we're like, you're done. And then he comes onto the court, and he like, hoops him out, like, of the, of the court. And I was like, yeah, that's gangster. Drama Sandler is the best Sandler. Hustle takes sixth place. Hustle, to me, in this era, is gonna be one of the greatest basketball movies that's come out. Especially when you have someone like Adam Sandler, who historically has always played comedic characters. You walk on that court, you have to think, I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. So let me ask you again. Do you love this game? Yes. Is there a newborn kitten purring in here right now? I couldn't hear you. Do you want to be in the NBA? Yes! It shows, obviously, in the name of the title, the hustle that someone like that has to have who wouldn't get the glory. You get the coaches, even the assistant coaches. We've got Phil Handy who's about to come out. Everyone's like, Phil Handy, the assistant coach of the LA Lakers, LeBron James, Kobe, you know. But who found LeBron James and Kobe? I want to, like, after seeing that now, I'm like, I want to know who the guy was that scouted them. It was very interesting to have all the NBA players included as well, like, I think Anthony Edwards was a great addition, like him playing like a bully role, showing like, you know, the tough side of the NBA. Yeah, good movie, I think. I, I thought that was good. I like Adam Sandler getting on his serious tip. 
The movie is iconic and the soundtrack is double platinum. Above the Rim should be on everyone's watch list, on every platform, on planet Earth and beyond. Legendary, legendary for a whole different reason. So now you're already, you're already hooked onto basketball, right? Because it's an elite, what are we talking about, you know? In the mix of basketball, hip hop culture, just pop culture and stuff as well, because pop culture is hip hop and black culture now. It's Tupac. In a world where every point counts, the hardest part of winning is choosing sides. Now, I don't care if you don't believe in me, I'm gonna make it anyway. A bit serious, but I think at the time, it's what, like, it's the culture. I think it's the culture and like the seriousness of like how basketball was people's lives there. Now yeah, Above the Rim, one of my favorite basketball movies. I used to have it on DVD. The um, reason why I got it was because um, Tupac was in it and um, yeah, I think, what was his name? Birdie, I think his name was. And yeah, nah, it was a dope movie. It just reminds me of my childhood. I watched it when I was a kid. And it was fascinating to me because it was like, a, it was around street ball as well. And so like, I snatched a few moves out of that movie and it uh, worked with my favor. So it would be inbounding because they just scored and he'd pretend to walk back. And then the inbounder would like pass it to his mate and just do a, a, a U-turn and grab the ball and, and put it back in. And that's, that's what I've done a few times because I don't expect it. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Space Jam takes fourth spot, his airness, Bill Murray, the Looney Tunes and Dennis Nedry for the win. I feel like Space Jam was was very important, not only because of just how influential it came, it came for the rest of the world and what it did for Jordan, right? But what it did for that brand, because that's when Jordan was already Jordan, but now you're another level of like, iconic as well, you know? I think that this movie was really strong in um, merging, I guess, two really iconic brands together. There's the NBA and there's literally Looney Tunes. I mean, those are two powerhouses in itself from that time. I'm, I can't think of any other cartoon, um, apart from maybe Tom and Jerry, that, you know, had us in such a chokehold. It elevated Michael Jordan's branding from becoming just, you know, not just, but an NBA player and then becoming an actor, um, literally acting with the Looney Tunes. Like, that's insane. No one had done something like that yet. The one scene where Jordan does this dunk from half court, like how many rappers have used that in a punchline? Because it's like a really big reach. And yeah, it's a awesome film. I feel like the old version was so much cooler because it was just like nostalgia. It felt like your childhood. I mean, like Looney Tunes, you know what I mean? Like everybody watched that. But now, nah, yeah, the old one for sure, not the new one. Nah, let's go with the let's go with the recent one. It's based around like being stuck in a freaking in a game, you know. And it's like I guess that's like real life shit too, because like most most of the times people is on their on their on their phones and all that. So just them getting sucked in it, and then it's like when they get out of it, they appreciate like their, what's, I guess, important, you feel me? Uh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> I can't do it without laughing. Fuck me, fuck Tash. Well, that's all, folks. <laughs> Chad Moss, formerly known as Lil Bow Wow, takes the court with too many OGs. Jason Kidd, AI, Vince, T-Mac and Alonzo Mourning are just a few who pull up. Secondhand blazers and a lightning bolt will either make you play like Mike or turn you into a supervillain, depending on the franchise. I was kissing my shoes for years, bro. Know what I mean? I still did that. If you watch, um, if you watch anything I do now, basketball related, I'm gonna do that. It's gonna happen, because that's just how iconic it is. Y'all can make your jokes, but yo, we're outside. Shirts off, you feel me? Same type of way, bowling, little Romeo type vibes, bow wow type vibes, and that that was attached to that um, like Mike moment. So it's a moment in history for me. You see a pair of shoes hanging from a power line, I'm like, like Mike, every time. And I'm like, when I was a kid, I would always be like, if I got those shoes down from the line, would I have superpowers? Probably, maybe. Can I get up there? No. <laughs> Starts with the shoes, like it's like this magic. It's telling kids that when you work hard, when you have a dream, you can achieve it. You know how your mom would take you to like garage um, sales and stuff? There'd be like shoes and stuff. I'd be like, maybe these are the pair. Maybe, maybe I'm just like the next Michael Jordan. I beg my mom to buy them for me. Never was. Silver medal goes to one of the countless hammers under 40 acres in a mule. Omar Epps and Sanaa Lathan put the class in the classic love and basketball. I'll say this. I feel like that's when, that's when girls started like, like liking bowlers, you know? So thank you, thank you for that. I love talking about this movie because um, Monica and Quincy are almost throughout the movie on the same level um, at their career. 
for the entire movie. And I think that it's not often in movies, in media, and probably in real life that women are challenging men's egos <laughs> to the same extent that Monica was. Listen, Monica, Monica was me. The amount of times I used to say, well, why can't I? Like, because I'm a girl, like, that's not fair. I'd say that with my parents about my my brother. I'd be like, well, you let my brother do it, you let Demso do it, or you let, you know, I'd always think that, I'd always find a way to kind of bring that into my mantra. And sometimes it was, it was probably unnecessary and it didn't really make sense, but it was just, I just kind of used that line. But I realized that whether it made sense back then or not, it was, it helped motivate me to get to where I am now. Oh, who doesn't love a little bit of a love and basketball story? I thought I was in a love and a love and basketball story once upon a time. You know, I was the I was the the girl on the side. I loved basketball a little bit, and then I was dating a boy that was like into his basketball. So I was like, oh, this is so love and basketball. Didn't work out like that. But that is what that story tells people: is that you sports can bring love. You know, you can make friendships. You can make so many things, but also you can you know, meet the love of your life through basketball. So I think that's what it tells people. Seeing a perspective of like two boss relationships, you don't really see it. Like, it's like an ideal, like, um, relationship that people want as well. I only watched that because, um, because I'm from the Bieber era, era, and so like, all the shorties and I was talking about love and basketball and Bieber back in the day, so that made me watch it and it was actually a really good movie, so. And at the top of the podium, Sam Jack on a Sam Jack. To me, he'll always be Mace Windu. To others, he's forever Coach Carter. So I don't know, do I really love it because I love it? Or do I love it because every, every, every time we had a new teacher that was scared of the class, she'd put on a movie and it'd be Coach Carter. Is that why I love it? Or do I really love it? You feel me? But either way, legendary, it taught you morals, you know? If you grew up without a dad, you feel me? If you grew up in different situations, you're watching certain things, you're getting your morals from certain places. Coach Carter, you got your morals from it. Outside of it being a basketball movie, there is so much in that movie that I've just sort of kept with me for the rest of my life. Now I want you to go home and look at your lives tonight. Look at your parents' lives and ask yourself, do I want better? If the answer is yes, I'll see you here tomorrow. And I promise you, I will do everything in my power get you to college and to a better life. Yeah, that's the OG. That's the, that's the OG one. Eh? I think I watched it like back in like back in school where eh? they made us like watch it in a like, little boarding school and stuff. Humility and just like persevering through everything. I think that's really the main message of Coach Carter, perseverance and like applying. Cause I, like everyone, everyone in that movie, like they just want to do basketball, but obviously like Samuel L. Jackson's character is like, no, you guys need to be be good in like all aspects of your life. You have to make sure you got all that together, and I think that's super important. That movie is like got a lot of us playing basketball too. Like when we were younger, like as far as like being able to relate to that, like young kids growing up and they needed a place to sort of go and keep them out of trouble. You know, just I think it just shows like you know the rough, like tough side of basketball. Like people don't really see the like, especially like people in Australia, like me, like just seeing the Americans, all they have to go through, and like also the, like their side problems, like their family or their hardship that they're going through, and then coming back to the core and working their ass off, but. Yeah, it was like quite a wholesome kind of storyline um, from what I remember. I haven't watched it in, since I was like a kid, but because um, back in the days, um, I used to have like a curly little afro with my light skin and bushy eyebrows, so everyone thought I looked like that, um, what's that actor's name? Cruz, yeah, everyone called me Cruz in that, because I used to play ball back in the days too, so. I, like when he came out, I was like, oh, yo, cool, another light skin brother doing his thing. So, yeah, nah, Sh Coach Carter was a cool movie as well. I just like, they reminded me of my trainings and that, the discipline of the coach and how strict he was. It reminded me of some of my coaches back then. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Mere playing small does not serve the world. That's all you get. <laughs> And that was the Complex Top 10 Hoop Movies. Thanks for watching. Tune in for the next one.